Hey beautiful people of the Most High God, all praises to the Most High, hope you're doing great, I hope you're doing good, hope you're staying blessed. With that being said, God wants to talk about the scripture with 2 Timothy 4 and 18 to deliver thee from every evil work. Because every work is going to be brought into judgment, whether the work be good or whether the work be evil and every secret thing. So as you know already, those who read the word of God, it says nothing that's hid shall not be made known. Nothing that's buried shall not be uncovered. So you already know that. So let's get into it. So Ecclesiastes 12 and 14 says, for God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, God wants to talk about this thing called every evil work. Because where envy is, as we talked about greed and envy, so where envy is and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. So where somebody's envious and where somebody's strife, like always making strife with others, there's confusion. There, there's, that means there's lies there. There's every evil work. So what's every evil work? These people can be plotting murder, doing all kinds of abominations, secret works of darkness. You understand? Because where envy is and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. So when you're dealing with someone who's envious and you're dealing with someone who starts a lot of strife, Whatever they're telling you, there's confusion behind it. Because whatever they're doing, there's an evil work behind it. Well, so now in 2 Timothy 4 and 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So this scripture will deliver you from every evil work. Do you understand these words? Every evil work. So 2 Timothy 4 and 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And this is because of evil work and it's not executed with judgment quickly. That's why people's hearts are set in them to do evil. As I spoke in the, the, the video before about men's hearts in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil now in Jeremiah 26 and 3 if so be they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way that I may repent of me of the evil which I propose to do unto them because of the evil of their doings says God now in 1 Corinthians 3 and 13, because we're going to talk about every good work, right? So in 1 Corinthians 3 and 13, every man's work shall be manifest. So every man's work shall be manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. So no, everybody thinks, some people think they could hide their evil deeds. They could hide their evil work. They can't do that because it's going to be manifest by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So whatever sort of work they do, it's going to be revealed. And it's going to be exposed and tried by fire. Whatever sort of work they do. Secret work, whatever work. Now we're going to talk about every good work. Be in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 17, comfort ye your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. So comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Now 1 Timothy 5 and 10, well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has revealed, relieved, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed after every good work. So there's people who follow after every good work. This is speaking of a woman who's well reported of for good works. She's brought up children. 
She's lodged strangers. She's washed the saints, saints' feet. She's relieved the afflicted. She's has diligently followed after every good work. Now in Colossians one and ten, that you may that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So what are we supposed to that we might walk worthy of the Lord and being fruitful in every good work, increasing in knowledge of God. So does it ever say we're supposed to stop learning? Never. We're always supposed to increase in the, in the knowledge of God. Now in 2 Timothy 2 and 21, if a man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So when you're perched clean from your sins and your ungodliness and your unrighteousness, you're a vessel that can be used for honor. You're sanctified, you're, you're meat for the master's use. Who's the master, God? You're meat for his work. Prepared, prepared to what? Onto every good work. So there's people who practice evil work. So with 2 Timothy 4 and 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen so there's two kind of work out here good work and evil work now titus 1 and 16 they profess that they know god but in works but in works they deny him by being abominable and disobedient and onto every good work retrobate. So you hear that? There's people out here, they profess that they know God. But in their works, they deny God. Being abominable and disobedient. Onto every good work, they're retrobate even onto every good work. People who give to the poor and have to record it and publicize it. And televise it. That's not good. That's not from your heart. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So God will make it sufficient for you to abound in every good work because his grace that he puts on you. So what? And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, even from others. That you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And and every man's work shall be manifest. Now it's 1 Corinthians 3 and 13. I'm going to read the scripture again. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Hebrews 13 and 21, make you perfect in every good work. So what? Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in the sight, in his sight through Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Deuteronomy 30 and 9, and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand. In the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy land, for good. So for what? For good. For every good work. And God will do this for your what? For your good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good. So what will God also do? He will rejoice over thee for good. As he rejoiced over thy fathers. And I'm going to end it here with Nehemiah 2 and 18. Then I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me. So you see when it says the goodness of the Lord, your life is supposed to be made good. You're supposed to abound in the goodness of God, every good work of God. The hand of God is good upon you. Let me read this again. Then I told them that the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me, 
And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. So you're, if you're doing good work, God will bless it. So this is about um, deliverance from every evil work, which is 2 Timothy 4 and 18, and letting you know the difference between every good work and every evil work. Stay blessed, beautiful people, and I hope you have a blessed day. Much love.